our laws as it pertains to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? I'm just saying. You go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Thank you all for being here. Another episode of Ask Dr. Drew. Welcome back. We are going to be talking with our friend Leanne Tweeden, who stays with me. You can find her at Leanne Tweeden, L-E-E-A-N-N Tweeden, T-W-E-E-D-E-N. Uh, I hope you were with us that last hour. Uh, Leanne, of course, is uh, did a show with me on KBC for about a year, and uh, you've known her for many different television and radio projects, primarily in the sports area. But uh, she and I have been talking, uh, it seems like incessantly, about homelessness. And uh, I think... <laughs> I've been talking about it for a couple of years, but I think with working with Leanne, it became we became emotional, and so we've been doing what we can to try to help uh, solve that problem. And we're going to be joined in the studio in just a moment by the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness, what has been called the drug czar, except this administration does not have czars, so we'll, he'll, we'll give us that history in just a moment. Mr. Robert G. Marbot, he's going to be with us in just a second. I'm going to take a quick break for some business, and we'll be back to talk about really what this problem is and what we all think we need to do to solve it. Be right back. The CBD industry is still pretty much the Wild West. When it comes to claims and criticisms, the science is catching up with the industry. We will have clinical science soon enough, and there seems to be an overwhelmingly positive response these days to CBD's efficacy. We've all heard the reports, and luckily, our good friends at Social CBD are raising the industry testing standards. They like to say they are test-obsessed. Social CBD works closely with their suppliers and multiple third-party labs to ensure you are getting exactly the package that they say you are getting. High-quality CBD with 0.0 THC. And Social CBD wants you to be skeptical. That's why they put a QR and batch code on every package. This allows you to check all the test results for your product, not general testing, the product, the one, the specific batch you bought. And while Social CBD broad spectrum products are available in a range of formulations, each of which is clearly described so you can make an informed decision without all that hype and promises that sound too good to be true. To learn more, go to drdrew.com slash social CBD. That is my website, drdrew.com slash S-O-C-I-A-L-C-B-D. For a limited time, you can save 20% at checkout with the code Dr. Drew. Now let's get back to the show. Needles have increasingly become a part of everyday life. Proper disposal is both difficult and expensive. We have the solution. Simpler, safer, affordable, and fulfills the obligation to protect our environment. A single stick with something like this means tracking down the user, it means blood test for the person's stock, it means possibly medication for an extended period of time. Needle sticks are devastating. No more, incinerate the needle. Needle goes in this port, it's over done needle gone we all have loved ones who use needles keep their home safe medical offices are loaded with sharps we are using ancient technology to protect our patients our staff ourselves you know what needle sticks do you know the cost and the devastation psychologically and physically potentially from a needle stick eliminate that completely stop using ancient technology sand midi it will solve your problems find out more at needledestructiondevice.com all right, we are back, everybody. The United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, called USICH, am I getting that acronym correct? correct? Independent federal agency within the executive branch that leads to implementation of federal strategic plans to prevent and end homelessness. It has advised, it's advised by a council, which includes the heads of 20 federal member agencies. And Robert Marbut is uh, the head of this organization. It is such a privilege to have you here. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a real, real privilege. Yeah. Leanne, can you imagine? I, I know. I just, uh, gosh, I, I wish a year ago we were having this conversation. Yes, Leanne and I have, have, have expressed many, many hours of frustration <laughs> and fear and concern. We three hours and a I, day. And when day. I had the privilege of going and speaking at the White House, I met Mr. Marbut and I was like, 
we, we have our man. <laughs> our yes. man's in the right spot. Dr. Ben Carson was kind of first. He yes. was a, a you know physician. He understood where you were coming from with the diseases. And now- so we talked to Ben on yeah. our radio show, and, and I, it was like, for me, it was like doing a handoff after call. I was like, here are the cases. And he's like, got it, got it, got it, got it. And he goes, you know, we need to, here's what we need to do. And I was like, yes, that's what we need to do. Yes. And Secretary Carson's amazing. Yeah. He gets this issue so deeply, yes. but he gets it as a clinician, a scientist, and a physician. Yes. And that's and, how and he gets it, it. And then he's looking solution as a administrator right right which i know is a hard he's expressed many times how tough that job is yeah. he said being a neurosurgeon <laughs> nothing as compared to being the administrator the head of hud yeah he's he, he's hud right i've yes. yes. been yes. azar yeah. hhs yeah. is azar yeah. and uh, yeah. who also was a very impressive man i was spent very with impressive him. Yes. really interesting dude so here you are you're visiting us in the really the epicenter of this problem uh I came to the White House and talked about how we got here in terms of how we eviscerated the state system for managing mental health and, to some extent, drug addiction. And uh, we've forsaken these people, and now they are dying at the rate of three a day in our streets. Give us the national perspective and give us some idea about how, how you want to sketch out a solution. Well, uh, for, uh, I'm a big believer you got to know exactly what the problem is before you try to solve it. For sure. And uh, there's a lot of people trying to solve a problem from a, a sort of an advocacy point of view, and they're not looking at it clinically. They're not looking at real data. Mm-hmm. I used to run a lot of places. I've helped homeless many places. Pla- homeless centers, yeah. assistance centers, and transformational campuses. I've helped uh, probably 150 communities actually address this. So I take it a lot different. I start always with data, and then, you know, everybody always comes in. I'm amazing when I go Man's to the smiling. community. Man's my I, I, well, I, I, no, because we would talk to scientists, and a lot of times they just want to get to the answer they want to get to instead of letting the data lead them there. Yeah. I, I've gone arguing to so, from conclusions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. say I've gone to so many communities, and I I, I I had one of my handlers. This is literally my last project. And I said, "Watch what happens." So I asked 20 people in a row in, in meetings. I said, "What do you think the problem is?" And they went 19 out of 20 went right into the solution. Yeah, yeah. And right, so right, you right. have to right, right, understand right. the numbers first. Yeah. Then you go for, uh, depart from there. And that's so important. And, and what we know about the numbers, and let, let's sort of work L.A. out. Uh, L.A. is roughly one-fourth, just a little less than one-fourth of the overall unsheltered situation <sighs> the the for States. the whole United States. It's just unbelievable. And, and, and then that is mostly centered in a few spots, right. to, too. And so then you go to California, and roughly almost half of the situation statewide California is half of the overall United States. Oh, so there are many parts of the United States are actually dropping. And, and so and, and when you look at they're the, all coming here. And, okay. and, and when you look at the data, you actually see where policies are contributing to the problem. Sure. As we talked about at the White House summit, uh, that when when we went to deinstitutionalization sort of from the left and from the right, you went from why are we in that business? Okay, so let, let's drill in right, that a little bit. Right. So there was a systematic policy since the 60s to choke the institutionalization state systems to death. That but started with Kennedy, right? Because a lot of people the, want to blame Ronald Reagan for shutting down all the state mental health. No, it started with the community mental health out in 1963. It was, it was a, a great idea horribly executed, run by people that didn't know what they were doing, and it just didn't work. And in the meantime, they did successfully choke out the healthcare systems, the state hospitals, with no plan for what to do with the people that came out of the hospitals. That's the deinstitutionalization part. Absolutely. And the other part, you were saying the... It, it, and so uh, let, let's, play, let, let's run that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so people that were getting help and treatment in recovery... Mm-hmm. Are, are now no longer getting any treatment. Right. So where, uh, yeah. So so where does this group go? You know, the, this cohort goes to the emergency rooms, the emergency right. departments. Right. Well, that's to today. the jails. G- they go jails. To, they, to the street, streets. And, and the hospitals. Nursing homes. And, and nursing homes, too. Nursing homes. Or, or they die. Or they die. They're, they're well, die. Today I, we decided I mean, they have to know. die, right. which is and, incredible. And, and so when you look at the, the, uh, the that number of people, they and people say, well, what happened? That's part of this. It, it, you have to go back to that. That's one of the major contributing factors. Then the feds, about seven or eight years ago, started making some decisions and policies that really were not good. So, so let me let me before we fill those out, the the states were sort of happy because a lot of states were fiscally conservative, you said, from the right. So a lot of the states contributed to the problem by saying, hey, we don't want this expense anyway. You guys take it. 
didn't give any thought to whether the, it was going to be effective or not. They just said, okay, fine. We don't want the expense. You take it. Didn't work, right? That was part of the Meaning rights they problem. weren't making any money on these healthcare facilities? No, no. It was exp- the states had an expense, and they were like, hey, Fed want to take it? Go take sure. it. We, okay. this, so go ahead. And, and, and so what happens is we're spending the money now. You're spending it in different bad places. Right. 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 So the question is, it's that oil commercial. Pay me now a little bit or pay me a lot later when the transmission and the whole engine goes. Yeah. And so it is much better to use your money very smartly. Yes. And, 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 and likewise, there are a lot of people say we need more vouchers. We need more money. That doesn't make any sense unless what we're doing is right. Well, and mean, we're not there yet. Last we year, get we've been right. talking about this for so long on the yeah. air that last year, L.A. County and L.A. City spent over a billion dollars our homelessness, the crisis, and the number of people went up like 16, 17%. So you're going to tell me that a billion dollars, if worked effectively, is going to make ho- uh, homelessness worse? Well, no, of course not. So we're, I feel effectively. like we're throwing away money. We're spending $40 we million dollars to power to. wash sidewalks that they move their tents and come right back, but we're doing nothing for the people that are living on the streets and dying on our streets. A- absolutely. Right. And, and we have a graphic. Can we go to the graphic now? Is that yeah, possible? Let's do it. Here's uh, the graphic. We'll it, show you a graphic that gives the Really example and, and this tells is us what's this, going on here. And so if you look at the purple line over to the bottom left, the in the green bottom portion is what we call unsheltered homelessness. So these are people experiencing unsheltered. This is the street, the bridges, right. the marinas, etc. Sure. And if you if you look from 2007, 2014, it was going down 31.4%. Going down rapidly. Rapidly. Lot, now that's yeah. not an annualized, that, that's the total uh, period of time. And then it starts to change in 13 and 14 and then actually goes up. And the inflection point is a 50% inflection point and it's steadily going up. And what's incredible for a statistician is look how close the R graph, you know, the R data, when you look at the linear regression on it, the, the bar almost captures every movement. There's a few little small outliers, but basically the data is tight. So you begs the question, what happens in 20 and 13, 2014? That inflection point where it started getting worse, what it, was going on? And it's on a there? sharp, clean inflection point. Yeah. And then go look at the top. That's the overall homelessness number, 15.6%. And so that's all the assistance beds of all five types of assistance beds plus the people that are in no assistance on the street, Mm -hmm. and it goes up 15.6%. So what's going on in 2013? We fundamentally changed how we approached homelessness. We went in and said, we're just giving you a voucher, and we're walking away, and we're moving away from housing first, right housing first, housing right. first, yeah. housing, well, let's housing, not housing. Forget, housing. Prop forty seven became very big in California. What twenty fourteen? It was implemented. So all the crimes of doing drugs or being able to be taken off the street by a police officer put in front of a judge to say, "Do you want jail time? Do you want a drug treatment program?" has been taken off the table. And 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 across the board, you see this movement of we're just going to try to get a roof on you and not have any supportive services. And right. we moved from it being a requirement to maybe you have you it to. to almost nothing. Yeah, nothing and in the little red bar area, uh, often it, that's manifesting its stuff around the country is one case management meeting once a month for an hour. Nothing. Oh, and and okay. so that's not addressing anything. No. So we, no. when you look at this data, that you got to ask, well, what happened? And we moved to a thing called what's housing first, which to me is the medical equivalent of going to an ER and ED without any nurses and doctors. Right. Go to emergency room and it's empty. <laughs> and and, right. and, and yeah. we, give you right. a, we give you a voucher. And then some people say, well, that's mean or that's tough. If you get a Pell Grant in education, we require you to attend 12, 12 yep. hours of units. Yep. We require a GPA. Yes, sir. And you have to graduate in three years in most, most cases. If you get unemployment insurance in most states, you have to go to 10 interviews or, or such. Even in Section 8 housing, there are requirements. But somehow, for this one unique social problem, there, there's the, we don't want to require services. Yet, we need to have services. And whether They're we the ins- most seriously ill. It literally is like trying to treat, a, 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 expecting a sick person to get well when you stop treatment right or we say we have all the we have billions of dollars in what we've taxed ourselves here twice in california triple h and h money and they're trying to build you know now almost a million dollar apartments and i said to dr drew i go suddenly you're going to give a guy a million dollar a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar apartment that's been homeless that has schizophrenia or whatever and suddenly when he walks through the threshold with his new set of keys to his apartment
apartment, his schizophrenia goes away? Well, I'm it, like, I'm, are, are we are we insane here? Because right, I feel right. like we're in. We're it, because what down. lost you the house the first time, you will lose the house the second time and third time. Thank if it's not or treated. Or fourth time. If it's not treated. Right. Whatever that catalytic event that yeah. lost the house the first time right. has to be addressed. If you Look, want sustainable housing. Psychiatric illness is defined by difficulty functioning. That's what defines a psychiatric illness. And it starts with difficulty functioning at work. And then it goes right. to difficulty functioning in relationships. Family, then it goes yeah, to sure. difficulty functioning in your family. Then it goes to difficulty functioning with your nutritional needs. And then it goes to difficulty functioning finding living place space. That's the lowest functioning. It's when, when the disease has gotten so severe... You lose everything, including where you live. And, and you've literally described the cycle of most people experiencing homelessness. There's a catalytic stress event that occurs, and then you start to lose your, your friends. And right. then you, well, like, you lose your support You use up all groups. of the goodwill from your family, and, from your friends. They're like, okay, you've been on my couch enough. You're giving me grief. Move on. And, and Exactly. And then you stop making it to work. And yeah. then you eventually lose work. Yeah. And then you lose that's your illness. credit and rating. That's and that's and illness, then you right. lose your, 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 your house. And then yeah. you lose your car. Yeah. If you're it, there, right. and so it's a it's a progression down, and if we don't address those real clinical issues, and not everybody, and it, but I'm talking. My most understanding of, is my understanding is that that we're talking the, we're talking about you and I are, and the three of us today yes. are talking about the chronically homeless. <laughs> right, right, right. The people that are transiently homeless, I've seen data that suggest on the streets of the Los street, Angeles, like three months. on average, three months. Yeah. So somebody who's just down on their luck, but numbers. not part of an illness that's right. progressing. They spend an average of three months. And a lot of times they get back into the home that they were in before, before this event. Yeah. And it's so much more cost effective to prevent the entry into homelessness. Yes. And I would even go so far as the individuals you're describing that, because not everybody has behavioral mental health issues. Not everybody has substance uh, disorder issues. Not everybody does. But but it's it's the highest, it's the highest amount, but there are some, but that doesn't mean you don't need case management. You may need job coaching. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Case management, we case management was invented for psychiatric patients. Correct. So it kind of defines a psychiatric right. case. Well, I mean, and how so. interesting before when we were doing our show on KBC, right, Dr. Drew, we yeah. would talk to a lot of politicians, a lot of LA councilmen, a lot of people that are putting the money and saying we need housing and we need this. And I would push back, you would push back. And it was always, you know, they're trying to say, oh, it's housing, it's this, it's that. And we would say they need stuff. And and, the, and you would say wraparound services. And they kind of hated that word because they don't, it's almost well, like they them- don't want to associate certain things with people. You know, they have empathy and sympathy for the people that are homeless and there's different reasons. And then you would sort of work it back out well they need to see a case manager they need to see somebody about maybe getting back into the workforce they need to see somebody about their mental health and they're like yes exactly and drew goes those are wraparound services yeah that's exactly. right. I, mean, that's I, mean, right. you know. and yeah. I, I don't they, care they make if you, the case poor for yeah, us yeah right. i don't care if you call it wraparound services right. permanent supportive yeah, right. services whatever or you case call it management or psychiatric hospitalization that, it's all but, the same thing but just it, different it's, words. it's holistic services well that treat the catalytic event that's unique to you me and you we all have to, different to be fair, this is, I think, something that people will find very interesting, that uh, I am totally interested in and supportive of the idea of community ba- community settings with a high degree of focus on participation and vocational rehab, which are psychiatric things, but you do it in a in a in some sort of environment of care, you know, not doesn't have to be a hospital, right? And they're doing, Absolutely. This, is, this is like the Trieste plan. This is Fort Collins in Colorado. What do you think of those kinds of plans? And, and you know, one of the ones I was involved with, Haven for Hope, we have placed 13,000 people, permanent supportive housing and market rate housing over a nine plus year. We've reduced street level homelessness, chronic level homelessness, unsheltered homeless, 85% wow. in where, a year. Where was, wow. where, where was it? In San Antonio, Texas. And right up the street in Austin, they took that, they bought into housing first. Right. And that's now, as you see what's on TV, they're becoming a little mini Los Angeles yeah. and a mini Berkeley. Yeah. And we're, we're only about 80 miles apart. We're in the virtually the same television media, broader market. And they took a very different approach than what San Antonio did. And my, the people who followed after me and Bill Gree, who's been the chair, did an amazing thing. And it has worked. And so those settings really do Just work. Describe those settings. It is, it, they have 100 plus uh, federal, state, local government agencies there, mm-hmm. nonprofit agencies there, faith-based agencies there. Right. Now, how do you Secular. pull that off? We were told you can't deal with yeah. faith-based right. organizations. And, and Why not? They, or that they, they couldn't get federal money. Mm-hmm. And, and, and mm-hmm. what you want to do is you want to have as many. This problem is so big. I need 
everybody. everybody. We everybody. need everybody. Yes, yep. And when you start yes. saying, I'm going to make a rule and you can't help, but only you can yeah, help. Oh my but, God. but you see what they do publicly or privately, like Dr. Andy Bales or Reverend Andy Bales. You see what he's doing works. Of course. Yeah, he we knows can't what he's doing. give him more of money course. to kind of let him do what's working it, and being effective. And he is part of an overall group of about 300. He has like 399 peers, City yep. Gate. And yep. they, they have an amazing system and they have amazing success. Yet they almost get virtually no federal money now, right? I know because they've been they, they right. used to get federal money and now they're out. Wait, and so, 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 why is that? Why can't we help? Well, it, in our view, is we need all the help from anybody. If you if you do a program that works for us, we want your help. That's my and and I know that's controversial, but my view is so we, that now Reverend Andy Bells might be able to get money because we're, we're we're in a crisis. Why is that we, controversial? By the way, it, 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 we're in a crisis, and in Los Angeles and California, yeah. you have more people dying than we've ever seen any time in the history and, of measuring. And Mr. This. Marbet, uh, and, <sighs> and tell people why you're not the czar. I want you to be the czar, oh, but, right, right. but 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 I'm the executive director. <laughs> but there are no czars, no czars, even though the press uses that term all the time. Uh, that's my constant refrain to these people that will not contemplate uh, turning around that data we just pushed up on the screen, which is what does the body count need to be before right. they listen to you? In, in, or let's, let's make this. Uh, there it is again. It, we need to realize this is not a complicated issue. It is complex, right? but it's not complicated. If you go to the dictionary, there's a difference. One implies you can fix it, but you're going to have to be scientific about it. The other one is you can't fix it. You're in a quagmire. Right. This is complex, and it's fixable. And many communities have figured out how to do it. So why aren't we replicating that rather than going to some crazy policies? Period. I, I, right. And I feel like there are so many enablers and people that do feel like they're doing good, but we know on the back end. They're killing Dr. people. Drew, they're killing people. Mm -hmm. You're enabling. We have a guy, Max, that lives out where I live and, and hopefully everybody on our Facebook page is, is watching this right now on our homeless page. Fern, thank you so much for your work. But it's like, we have a guy there that's been arrested two nights in a row. He comes out. We know we've seen video of him. He's like, I'm looking for my wife in my house. And he's been in San Diego and he's looking at West Hills. He's in Woodland Hills. He's over there in Chatsworth. I know you're keeping it from me. We can't get this guy help. We can't get him off the street. What is the problem? You know, it, it's so frustrating that now it's affecting it's seemingly everybody else's mental health. All the people that have worked all their lives to move out to the suburbs, put their nest egg in a home, and, and now their kids can't walk across the street or they have to walk across the street to avoid underpasses or people like Max that are taking up the entire bus stop that have their tents open all day long. And Cops can't do anything. The other day on our Facebook page, there was a man that I'd seen taking my kid to preschool, had his pants down in front of the 7-Eleven. Oh, two hours later, guess what I saw on the Facebook page? He's laying on a mattress in the middle of our street. <laughs> and guess what? Two cops just pulled over, stood out of their car, didn't do anything, Dr. Drew. Just they, they just stood there and kind of just tried to make the traffic go around him so he didn't get run over. They have to try to encourage him to move. So this is the other I issue. I mean, we, we have ha laws that we cannot do anything in the, the right. stick and the carrot. We, there is no it, stick. It, anymore and where well, not the, just stick we just can't do anything if they're so ill they they don't know what right. they're and, doing and the administration we have a new policy that 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 you'll see getting pushed out across all agencies that that the president and the administration wants to push and that is trauma informed treatment plus literally a plus symbol affordable housing equals housing stability and, and that is putting yeah. the service side back in and getting rebalanced that we used to have. And if you really want to get serious about affordable housing, you got to get a, a serious about affordable construction. Of course. And in well, California and Los right. Angeles, when you control for the cost of materials, yes. and even if you control for the – there, If you control yes. for the hourly rate difference of, of construction, you're still twice as much – construction costs here yeah. and it's because the fees and the regulations and so what we're suggesting is threefold one waive every fee thank you every hookup you. everything yes. you have if you're serious about it, about it waive that number two make it where you can streamline the process of construction into one day yeah. it's called a one-stop shop many parts do that around the country here it takes six months 18 months and right. such like that and 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 you just can't be doing that yeah. and the other is you, you we need fire safety uh, uh you need that you need earthquake right. we're in california you need earthquake but when you start looking at these other 25 categories 
Nobody else in the country has these. Only California. Yeah, only California. Right. Yeah. Weave them for the homeless. And to some extent, Washington yeah. State has no, a. They're, they're well, doing what? a yeah, they're, 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 they're trying to catch up. And so those three things need to be done. And in candidly, if you, a lot of people say, well, just give us more vouchers, federal government. Oh, my God. If you do not increase construction door knobs that actually units if we flood the market with 50,000 new vouchers we will actually have the counterproductive we won't place any more new people in place and you'll actually raise the rate of course so until we create we can't voucher your way out of this we have to construct our way out and you have to do that with affordable housing and so the feds need to change the rules on getting back and in, in getting treatment services and care services, wraparound services, permanent supportive or holistic care. I don't care what you call it. We need to get that back into the game. And then the locals need to get real serious about deregulating. And I mean locals, meaning right. the cities, the county, and the, and the state is actually doing some good. But most of those are at the city and county level. Right. But there's also another problem that we have here in California. And, and this is not a joke. I don't care where you fall on this on the political spectrum. But we've had a million, maybe a million and a half undocumented immigrants come into Southern California and Los Angeles in the last year. They found homes. Maybe on the bottom rung. But you're talking about people that are already probably hanging on to the bottom rung of the ladder that are now falling into homelessness. So is it a housing crisis? Is it something they're creating because we're a sanctuary state? So you're letting all these people, they have to live somewhere. I don't see a lot of them living on the streets. None of them. Maybe a None lot of them. of them are living 10, 20, 30 in a, in a house or something, but they have found themselves housing. So what is it? Is it the problem that they created that we're allowing a lot of people to come in? They're finding homes. So it's crunching the homes that people on the bottom rungs that are having a hard time hanging on paycheck to paycheck. One thing happens to them, they end up on the street. Or is it that we're not building enough housing? It's too expensive. Every, all the houses we're building are million dollar apartments that most people can't afford. Which is it? It's like they're creating two problems at once. It, and virtually all the housing costs in California, and I mean, you know, and that means the add up of the California laws, the county See, laws, the, and then the whatever your local city is, sure. it's all self inflicted. It, it is 100% because nobody else in the country has these costs. Even New York doesn't have these costs when you control but it's for the righteous. land costs. It's righteous here in California to do all those things. Even if people are living on the street. But if you're serious about p addressing people dying on the streets, we should are, are be they? immediately least, doing it. Uh, wait, hold yeah. on. Are they? How long has this been happening now? Years in California. At least wave it for the development of the homeless housing. At least wave it, it yeah, for that. And, and the, the amount of people who have died in L.A. County has doubled roughly in six years, maybe five to six years. And so to me, we're in a real crisis now. This is oh, not absolutely. To, so, and so you can waive fees starting on Tuesday. Right. Every city council in state could go out and say, we're going to waive all the fees on, on affordable housing. I'm not talking about high yet. I'm talking about yeah, there. Just affordable housing. And you can do a one-stop shop where you get all processing done in eight hours, and you only work about what you really need, the life, safety, and the earthquake. You need those. you got to have those. And you want to have a dignified quality in a place. Environment, yeah. But you can't be building $550,000. That's not affordable. It's not right. anything. And it's then not how does happen. that make the people feel that, ha that can't afford their own $750,000 apartment, that work two jobs, and that are struggling to pay the rent and raise their kids in California. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It has that feeling of people going, they're breaking the law, walking out with under $950 out of Macy's every day. They don't get caught. They don't even get a slap on the wrist. They don't even, the cops don't even answer the phone anymore. It's so frustrating. And then, yeah, people go, oh, you know what? I'll get pulled over for going five miles over the speeding limit because they know I have money and then I'm going to pay the bill. You know what I mean? So it's a frustration that is building in these communities where we're being run over and inundated, and it feels like our politicians don't listen. They so, don't answer so, the phones. They're not. They're not talking to us. They just act like nothing's wrong. Oh, we just need more money. Just we just need more tax. So, so Leanne's feeling that she expresses very clearly and well is is a feeling that a lot of people have in this part. They're they're just sort of boiling over with stuff. Uh, it, it, it's it's not an uncommon feeling she's expressing. And, and I knew it had changed a couple of years ago when I had some friends on, on the Democrat side of the aisle that I had gone to college with out here. And when they started calling me saying, we have a problem in Santa Monica, you, they knew I worked oh. in the world of homelessness. Mm -hmm. oh, and they were, they were like, why is this? And they were ticking through this. And, and, and when, and when it sort of got beyond skid row here, oh, yeah. the politics seemed to change. 
It, when it was in one isolated place, it was sort of like it's over there. You're not. Always been it, there. Yeah. it didn't affect your neighborhood, yeah. Skid Row. You no, don't you never see but it. It's everywhere. Right. I, I, I have got. I've been in L.A. now five days, in in San Bernardino in the Inland Am- Empire. Every highway overpass or underpass I've seen, every Tent. single one has multiple tents. Every street, somewhere, every street I've driven, some segment of the street. Think about that. Every single street, some segment. Have you gone to the riverbeds yet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And yeah. and I went walking around uh, last night in, in, um, in you know, Skid Row, the traditional Skid Row. It's not just it, one block it, anymore. You it, know, it's that whole it is downtown area. everywhere in Los Angeles. And so the great thing is. If you want to create affordable housing, the elected people can do that immediately. They just start on Tuesday. Come back on Tuesday, start making the changes. And I'm talking statewide. And we also need to bring a balance of services and wraparound services where people, when they do get placed, that that they can sustain a housing environment and keep it. That their illnesses get treated. Because if you do that, the housing becomes stable. So so let's talk about the illnesses that, that, that are ubiquitous throughout the street by the LA Times own admission, 85% of people. And whenever I go out and talk to homeless, they'll, they'll tell me two things. We're all on meth, if we're not on heroin, uh, and everyone will have their own mental health and trauma sort of story. Everyone, every 100%. Um, a lot of these people are going to need pharmacotherapy. How are we going to do that? Because how are we going to get them to take it? And keep taking right. it and fund it. And what about the people that will need like to be in a facility for the rest of their lives? There will be people. Well, that let's let's need do this. Be, is, I have yeah. three topics. That's one of them. <laughs> let's do pharmacotherapy yeah. first. So, in transformational centers, and there are many yeah. across the country, yeah. they they've they've cracked that nut. They okay. know how to do that. How to get and, them and, to cooperate and they, with that. And that's the meds. why they're so successful. Okay, good. And the med management and compliance yeah. works. That's, and also, that, long I, we got to get right. them funding for long acting uh, NSF. Absolutely. Uh, and the the other is. Uh, you know, I often say housing first is a tool, mm-hmm. one tool mm-hmm. in a big toolbox. Right. What we do know is the group you were ta- talking about, that is actually what the first area housing first was used, and it actually worked. That That's a, sm- a small group yep. that that works for. That makes sense. It got misused across multiple other segments who people have different catalytic events. And so we have to understand what the right treatments are. Okay, so pharmacotherapy, I, I, having worked with this population for 30 years, I know... That's your expertise yeah, area. I, it's my area. I know what... The, the two areas I know is chronic psychotic illness and drug addiction. So drug addiction is the next thing. How are we going to motivate that? Because those people are not going to want to stop doing drugs. And, and you have to understand it's co-presenting in most cases. And so you uh, and, can't... And let, uh, I, so what you're saying is it's a co-occurring, which we call co- that, yeah. which is a psychiatric illness and a drug addiction. But the drug addiction is what's fueling the streets. <laughs> a- a- absolutely. So. Absolutely. And one, back to we need to understand the real numbers. Yeah. One number I gets thrown back at me a lot when I start talking to the people on the Hill and start saying, how do we start to make these changes? They said, the population on the streets is only 15 to 20 percent well they're taking the hud point in time drug addiction yeah that's well, not in our saying. streets <laughs> uh, yeah we do you as well but, yeah, that's, but, that's but laughable ofi- but official reports say that and here's why it's a self-report number oh the self-report well, means well, nothing it's a yeah, yeah, exactly. they mean but, nothing but that's, that's 18 year olds with uh, a clipboard but that's what's in the federal reports that's and ridiculous. so so if you really understand most people who who have done what i've done Put the numbers somewhere between 78% in Category 1, and in Category 2 is somewhere between 60 and 70%. That's my numbers. That's and, my then numbers. When you, yeah. and when you put the numbers together, there's a huge overlap. Yes, yes. And you have to address simultaneously. Both. In a yes. lot of I states, agree. here's the problem. A lot of states, you can treat one because that's in one department. The right. money comes down. Right. Or right. you can treat the other because that's in another I department. Understand. And you have to treat that together if you want to be successful. But, but, but the one that we're going to have trouble getting people off the streets and into treatment more than the psychiatric one is the drug addiction. Absolutely, right. so that's how we always the heart. Yeah. What did you say, Drew? That they the drug addicts only respond to three different things, right? Well, <laughs> well, like you know, they, they leverage. The they respond to leverage. Yeah, they, sure. if they if they lose their life, their freedom, or their child, those are the three things that motivate right. drug addicts to want to get better. All of but a if sudden, you come here to California and you're just allowed to be a drug addict. But you can freedom, steal and do losing everything. your freedom, yeah, is what, sure. But um, there's no oh, threat of that. What was I going to say about the drug addicts? It, you know, and and for this population, I. I am in favor of medication-assisted treatment. I don't think we're going to get sobriety out of everybody. But let's just get the medicated. I, I actually just went through a course to be able to, to 
prescribe Suboxone. I'm so committed that this is what we're going to have to do with the street population. Do we have the funds to do it and the personnel to do that? Well, it, it, the short answer is we're not spending our money right yet. So we got to get that fixed before you start adding money because right now we're putting money in the wrong places. Right, right, right. right. So, so you, you have to start by getting the ship pointed in the right direction yes, first. Yes. And when people start to see success, I think people support it. And, right. and, and, and that's what this president's committed to do with his L.A. initiative. And if, this, if, the, and if it comes together, and we're optimistic, but if it comes together, you know, we have to get the parties to agree. But if it works, you'll see some very fast placements on the street. And I, I am absolutely convinced, because I see it in other communities. When you see another community and the street level numbers going down and down, while we're successfully placing people who have all the issues you have, right. that's when people say, you know what, this really does work. And right. so there's ways to do it. To right. get behind But it. you can't handcuff the local providers and say, you can't do it this way, you can't do it that way. Right. The providers know how to do it, and, right. and we should get out of their way and let them do it. Right. Exactly the, the good right. providers. Of course. That's of course. exactly right. Let's take a quick caller. Somebody had some uh, question about the homeless situation. Uh, let's talk to Monique. Monique, you want to ask us a question? Go ahead. Uh, hey, Dr. Drew. How's it going? Hey, Hello. Robert. Hi, Leanne. Hi. Um, I am. How's it going? I am fascinated sitting here listening. Um, I appreciate from the top to the bottom the bottom to the top, everybody getting involved, mental health issues that underserved, unsheltered people face on the streets. Um, We need to get into the heart of it. My heart is beating out of my chest right now. But what I'm trying to convey is we need to have conversations. Because you're optimistic, I hope? I'm, I'm talking to Mr. Marber. It's the first time I'm optimistic. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm getting excited when I hear this. Yes, I am absolutely. Yeah, good. Yes, optimistic. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. I got to go. All right, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she wanted to say that we need to create, essentially, she, in her little blurb here to me, she was saying she wants to create liaison with the homeless, which is true. We need to create trust and, and Absolutely. We have to have people that know how to, th- this thing you talk about cracking the code, that's what you're talking in, about. In the communities that do it yeah. real well, it, you know, the one in San Antonio, we have this most amazing street level worker, his name Ron Brown, yeah. and he came from the streets and he, he's been with Haven for hope about 10 years and people and you go to every agency that's doing well everybody has a ron brown of course i, I call they, them i call them in my world they're attic whisperers yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and and these individuals go out and, and, and they by do, the way all the missions downtown have those guys too i've met them yes. and 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 what we have found around the country is that the, the new model that really works on the street is hot teams where you where you you take a master's degree general social worker or somebody highly trained in the world of ne- of homelessness and mental health and then you take a police officer who's CIT trained crisis informed treatment right tra- and you and so they've gone through they're they they're in your world yep. not 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 the law enforcement no world. I, I listen like even it, the, you know the DEA has changed their whole way of doing things right. too, more towards that kind of stuff and if you do and match those police officers with the social worker and you go out together. The success rates off the charts. Have you and asked? How, it, have how you, is it like with our hope teams? How is that different? It, it's very similar. And where this actually comes from is domestic violence. The crisis intervention teams on the Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, where you see so much of the domestic violence that is alcohol driven. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar enough to learn that they figured out. Have most police departments have figured out how to deal with that because right. it's so, not a law enforcement issue. Yeah, per se. Per it, se. It, right. it, 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 there's a touch yeah. of law enforcement yeah. there's a whole lot of social work yeah. there's a whole lot of dignity respect and caring right. and that's how it works on the street and a lot of people uh on one side say oh we can't use this and another side we can't use that uh, but it works right and, right and you have to have uh police involved that are properly trained and, and you have to have the social workers that are also properly right. trained and, and the, i would say also the the people go into social work to do this kind of work. People typically don't go into law enforcement to do this kind right, of work. Of course. So it has to be a properly motivated, properly trained law enforcement. I mean, we've talked to plenty of LAPD too. and sheriffs that just said, whoa, yeah. when we first became a cop or on the beat, that this was not what we were having to deal with. I mean, having to be, 
you know, homeless, uh, you know, uh, social workers and drug addiction people and crisis management because yeah. people are willing, you're trying to jump off overpass because they're high on method or whatever it is. They're like, this was not what we were trained to do. And, 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 and I have a son who just went through a police academy back in Texas. Mm-hmm. And, and some of the his class would like never want to do this. And right. some, this is their calling. That's good. And that's, that's, what, you, that's what you need. And I will say you have like here, you're, you're, you have a Hollywood department, a, a homeless, I don't know what their technical name is, but they look like a homeless that they look, feel, and walk like a homeless three outreach. Yeah. And so it's led by this great detective, and she really gets it. And so any any law enforcement that spends time in the streets gets it. Well, yeah, they they, they, it's it's not it's very obvious if you spend a little yeah. time there. And, and she's not people. what you would typically think of as your average police officer. She right. has a whole different, and, and she's a cross between a social worker and a and a rabbi and priest and wow, pastor and social she's worker and, and then a police nowadays. officer it's all, all, all together. And she's cracked the code Good. and her unit has, but she she doesn't, you don't, you have to volunteer to get to this unit. Right. You, you sure. know, and then you got to have special treatment to get to this I need to, to go unit. out with her or something. Yes. Yeah, wait, Let's yeah. do that. Yeah, okay. she's great. Um, the, you know, the DEA has really modified it. I was working on a little bit. Are you going to get them involved with this too? Because they, they, I think th- their whole philosophy changed, and, and it's moving right. in this direction. And, and our view is we're looking at any asset that can we bring to are, the table to do it. Tell, tell, at least locally here, yeah, they yeah. really want to be part of the solution. And, 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 and it depends on, you know, what, what who else, what other partners are offering. So we may yeah. get something from somebody and yeah, we yeah. don't need that. So we're looking at the, the president is committed to addressing this issue. And 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 we will bring whatever assets we can to the table. Likewise, we need the other partners to do it. And we're optimistic. And if we can do it, we know we can be successful. I mean, well, do you, do you think before. this can be successful without having laws that will force these people into treatment, even though they're so, resistant? So, so Leanne and I are fearful. Let's, let's just frame the, the – she bring it up a thing that, that makes us our stomach roll, run, rumble, which is we have now laws where drug using – are uh, unabated. They, they don't yeah. even the, the law enforcement yeah. don't even bother getting involved anymore yeah. because they, they give them a citation or a misdemeanor. They don't show up. They yeah. what, they, what the, why the DA doesn't prosecute. Right. So they don't even do. There's it no anymore. consequences. So so and and the same thing on the trafficking and the stealing to use. All that right. is not prosecuted any longer. So our fear is that unless the laws are kind of modified, the the leverage to get the addicts moving right. in the right like direction. Like the Hollywood team is great there. and that, that detective woman is great, but if she can't convince somebody that is severely mentally ill to go and trust and not be paranoid to get the treatment, there's nothing she can do legally. And, and, and let me just say, in, in this, the LA County went out with showers and tried to get hold of people oh, in the showers. Yes. How took work? them on average 14 contacts to get one person into one shower. And so there's nothing to move and, it along. And, and, <laughs> and, and so just the in the last... Well, I think it's about three weeks ago. It's it's a case called Martin versus Boise, oh, which yes. went all the way up to Supreme we Court. We talked to the two lawyers that, and, that presented and, the case. And when they, that's law of the land, they made a decision. Now, in... in nice circuit. It, yeah, that's the West Coast. But over in the Southeast, out of the Atlanta circuit, there's been a case for 30 years, almost 30 years, and it's called Pottinger versus Miami-Dade. So it's been around a lot longer than this, and it's virtually the same ruling. And we have figured out how to navigate that system and make it work. Good. And and just look at the Florida numbers versus the California numbers. Ridiculous. And they both now have virtually the same case. One side's you know Martin versus Boise, the other's Miami versus uh, Pottinger. Miami Dade versus Pottinger. And this has actually been around much longer. And so we have figured out how to navigate around that and, and work. So there's ways to do it. You have to, it can't be forced now, it has to be incentivized. And you can create incentives that work for large numbers. It won't Great. work for 100%. Right. No, no, but, we're not, but, not, we're but, not for, no, but we're progress. Something, yeah. that's something hope. movement. Improvement. And, yes, and, and what you. we've found across Florida, because we I've worked in about half the counties in Florida, not not is my administration role in my prior life and what we have found is about 70 percent will come in off the street if you set everything up and write it if you incentivize this and set it up right we have seen that over and over and over so so what are the incentives the (laughs) it's running with care and dignity you have to do it with dignity and respect it's a human level is there community or something there's community on the inside but there's also community on the outreach it's the ron browns it's it's this detective in in hollywood so it's systematic outreach but you 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 have you have highly organized highly holistic got it system level and it works yes yes 
Yeah, so systematic outreach. Yes, it and it, it's systematic. not a one-off. It's not a haphazard yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a highly organized, and you have a highly organized place you go to. Right. And you have to get everybody involved, and, and that is working. But in California, for the guy that's crazy and has his pants down and he's pulled out a mattress and he's laying in the middle of the street and he's resistant, resistant, resistant to no matter how much charm anybody can give him to go into treatment. And we all know that he's mentally ill. He's the crazy guy laying in the middle of the street and we do nothing. What do we do for that person? In, in what I find across the country is, is somewhere between 14 and 28 percent, and I've seen it vary around the country, is what we, you, the, the new term is shelter resistant. I used to say when it, when it come in, when it we come just, off the They're street. just resistant patients. Yeah, for us. And, sure. and that's and, part of psychiatric and, illness. And, but, but the good news, that means you have 80 percent or 75 or 85 percent to work with. So it's true. What, I, th- what, I think you're going to find here you got to, because we've been going so long, we're going to have a lot of resistance. And, and I agree. Yeah. And the communities that have gone the longest without yeah. services and, and have the most and resistant. So have the most resistant. Yeah. But let, let's put that up at the 30. Let, let's add 2 percent. I'd say 40 percent. Okay. I, I'm, let's but, be generous. Okay. Let's do 40. That still means 60 yeah. percent is. is and, and, and let me ask you, if, if, if there was a 60 percent reduction here in Los Angeles County. I consider I would. And we started placing people in long-term permanent supportive housing. I would do cartwheels down rate. my hill Would hill that here. be a success? <laughs> yes. Right. I would yes. do cartwheels and, down the and hill. And so – my view is we have enough to say grace over. Yeah. So let's let's we know how to work that sixty percent. Let's work that. Yeah. Now that's not taking away, and this is really I I, I don't want to get in your your your, your yeah. expertise level, yeah. but the laws of fifty one fifty got to change in in, oh. in, in California. You know, you, have you talked to John Morlock out here? Yeah, Try it, twice, uh, try uh, twice. And so so you got to get those. We need, we need a conservatorships expanded, yes. and we need an expanded definition of gravely disabled. Yes, in a, a and sane maybe definition maybe some of Medicare. Disabled. What were we talking about? Oh, like the and the IMD exclusion. It, That's it, another thing. And I'll, I'll make it even a little simpler than that. We have people that are that are getting certified at, at for fifty one fifty in California, and it's a, for a seventy authorized for seventy two hour, hour hold, mm-hmm. but the system mechanically only tolerates and has the ability to address maybe twenty to twenty three hours. Right. And then they're back so, out. So so so. Again, I, I go with low hanging fruit in terms of systems we can get implementing fast. We got to get people that are already being certified that everybody says needs a seventy two hour hold. Oh, yeah. Let's make sure we do a seventy two hour hold, you not a twenty two hour hold. Well, the reason they do that, first of all, their beds are at a premium. But the other reason right. they do it is the patient comes in and then says, "I'm no longer suicidal," right, and then they'll ask them two more questions: Can you get food? There's McDonald's across the street. Where are you going to live? In my tent at uh, Echo Park. That's it. Can I just tell you, a week ago in West Hills, the West Hills Hospital where I live, a guy checked himself out of the hospital just wearing a backwards blue thing, no underwear or anything, grabbed a shovel and started breaking windows on all the doors in the neighborhood because he checked himself out. And he's... You know, transient, yeah. mentally unstable guy, all over the news, all over you know local California news, and and, and my question to the people that day. let him out is: is he better? Is he happier? Was that 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 was human dignity? That was. <laughs> I, I, we got. Did get you people- address the catalytic event? No. And then did it make the but community better? Can you do better? that in no. twenty four hours? Can you even no. do that in seventy two no. hours? No. 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 So. We are we agree that at least in this, what we call Lanterman Petra Short Act in this case needs to be addressed, and that that's the part that I've been very focused on because I, I to have families begging with help to bring their family members home, begging they have resources, doctors, beds, food, medicine, and the the state of California tells them to take a hike in, every time. And I learned so much at your your talk you did at the White House at the summit. And it, and I wish everybody uh, that's online somewhere. I don't know exactly. I don't know the C-SPAN. link by heart. I, I'm going to give a similar talk in Sacramento on yeah, Tuesday. But, but but if 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 you if that talk will show you how we got there, yes, and how we got way out of balance, it is no different than how we got out of balance on the services here. The Absolutely. parallel is yeah. it's scary. When you did your talk, I was like. Oh my gosh! I, I've seen it in a different discipline, but we did the same exact same thing. Stupid mistakes. And it's yeah. interesting. I read an article from uh, one of the medical journals that Alzheimer's research also did it. It's one of the few areas that there's no 
treatment right now that stops it. There's no treatment that slows it down in the same. And I read this article and it was about the mechanics of the research and how people were marginalized who actually now have the real idea and the real clue. It is no different than what happened in the world on homeless and moving away from services and no difference than what you, you went into that very elaborate, how it changed in the fifties to the sixties. And the, it, to me, it's scary that we here's here's three areas that I know of, that, that I know of. Well, I hope it's not happening in many other areas. I hope. Well, we we make mistakes all the time in the names of certain priorities, right? Certain but then priorities. let's fix them. We don't keep going down the course. Well, let's I'm fix so them. With you, I don't think this can get. I, something's going to happen. I mean, you see everywhere now, everywhere you've driven that you just said earlier that there's just homeless everywhere. Every underpass, every exit off an off ramp, every overpass when you're driving on a freeway. They're in all of our towns where you never thought you'd see it before. I, th- there's only going to be some, I mean, how much more growth can we have before something happens, before something gives what, you know, is, you know, people are going to become vigilantes or people are going to start. I, 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 mean, I would say, I would say before you start thinking that way, the, the troops are coming. The, the, the cavalry's so. on the way. That's how, that's what I feel today. Yeah. I like, haven't felt very hopeful in California I, I with not, our politicians. But I have not, I've not had a Robert I don't Marbet care who <laughs> makes the decision. It, Somebody do until something. Until now. And I, it, I feel like the, the cavalry is on its way. I it, really feel. It, and and the, the president, the administration, Secretary Carson, it worked all through the holidays on this, uh, working with the mayor and, and working Great. with the county supervisors. And, and if that gets done, and we hope, you know, we have to, you got to have partners. And, and, it, and, and I hope we get there because if we do, you will see some very quick improvements. I agree. You don't solve it immediately. But with improvements comes people saying, wow, that worked there. Let's, let's keep going. Let's move right. it two miles over. Let's go I over here you. and yes. you can get uh, it. What about the IMD exclusion? I, I think what you the what you covered is just critical. And we got it and that's one of many. I mean we got okay. you know, and I think you gotta move that way. You gotta move to having a real seventy two hour hold. Okay. okay, so we're all in agreement uh, we, that these are all things that we gotta get underway. And there's a mix that you have to have and and because there's no silver there's no one reason we got here right you know we've messed up a lot of things along the way Mm -hmm. but now we got to stop unmessing and we got to be real honest about it and not be in Canada let's don't be politically correct because you're not going to solve it no yeah we got to start looking at the real issues and start working. You know, I was reading something about your background and I, I told Dr. Drew, I knew I liked you when I was reading this, that, you know, when to be a leader, you're not going to be popular all the way around and we understand that, right? So you have to stand up but, and say certain things. But what I appreciated in, in one of the articles, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but you would say, please don't let them panhandle in your city. Please stop just giving these homeless people everything to make them comfortable on the street. That's what we're doing with this guy, Max, on Valley Circle. I feel like we're just making it so comfortable because people, some people who feel like they're doing good and then others that are just enabling him, we know that when it gets really cold, when it gets really rainy, they accept services for a couple of days. It's amazing what happens when they're not comfortable that they will go and search out things to make them more comfortable. And then when that goes away and it's sunny again, here they come back out laying all their stuff out on the street. Let me just give it's you guys a-, a comment on Facebook. This is Vape who says, my mother has schizophrenia. She was, she was long-term committed in a long-term facility for custodial care. An ACLU lawyer got her out and now she's homeless. Good work, everybody. I hope, why is that just, lawyer held accountable? What, what you, right. Yeah, I mean, why, they, why is he, they feel like they're doing If she that. dies, I want him accountable. But I feel like her. they tell you when, they, when it comes to these cases, they, 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 they do one step, right? Well, they have their civil rights. You can, because they're well, missing, they, I've heard you people can't say, tell them what do you, to do. Do you think they don't have agency? Yeah, when you're in certain disease states, you don't no, have agency. That's ex- a feature of the disease. Yeah, exactly. And we want to restore their agency. And it doesn't take much to restore agency and, of people with certain illnesses. And, and for people who are going to go online and watch what you, you did, when you were at the White House and you were comparing, sometimes you have a medical issue, whether it's heart attack, stroke, yeah. or seizures. Right. You, you have no capacity of decision making we right jump right, right in, in there. There. take them right and, to the and, hospital and the parallel when you said you know and if we, we they do your best to try to find your family whatever and if they don't they still go you in treat them, of in fact, course if you don't you're going to probably be in trouble you're going to be in big trouble you're going to yeah, it's, it's, it's unconscionable it, it, and yet if it's a psychiatric illness magically we don't treat the, it the brain is a medical organ That's just right. like the heart That's is exactly like the right. lung right. is or a knee joint That's exactly right and it, it doesn't sometimes it can't work and it affects things like aging and insight and then we got to restore it we got to help treat it so it restores all that addiction is one of the conditions where it goes away schizophrenia certain bipolar states look it, these are 
Every other country on earth treats these things. Why can't we? It's just so silly. And not only look at that, people, you know, just in communities where you see people, a lot of times it's like, ah, I don't care if they're doing drugs, as long as it doesn't affect me. Well, it's affecting all of us now, right? Because they're all on the streets. You're you're passing by watching people smoke meth and doing heroin and shooting up as kids are walking by in their school buses. And it's just, it's insanity. You know what I mean? It's it's gotten gotten to a dystopian, really weird situation. And I'm worried about the the infectious disease problem, too. We had typhus outbreak. Well, we saw that in San Diego. It's common. Uh, more yeah. is common. More stuff's common because yeah. if you don't if you don't manage sanitation, you get infectious right. diseases. And rats. And we have we have AFB. We have tuberculosis, non tuberculous <laughs> AFB, typhus. We're gonna we've got norovirus. We've got untreated excrement Waste. going to the ocean yeah. and killing the sea mammals. Whoa, we got it. We got an emergency here. We got to deal with. But I know. Speaking of emergencies, you've got to go <laughs> yeah, to another no, meeting. We're we're going to stick around and answer some phone yeah. calls. But I'm going to let you and go. Thank you very much for for having me on your show. I can't. I and cannot. Thank you, thank you sir. I, I actually think this is going to have a big impact. I think people seeing you and understanding what you're up to and feeling optimistic about building community and and outreaching and li- creating liaisons. The word I kept I used early on. And I saw no one attempting it. But you're talking about creating. Li- liaison services that are effective and then maintaining that relationship. And we know it works in places. We know it works. Yeah, so it works it's going to work it, for tens it, of thousands of people. And, and I want to just close with something you, you, were, you were talking about. We need everybody to do this. We we need mayors. We need governors. We we need Congress. We need we, Leanne and your council. kids and yeah. your yes. neighbor. We, we need everybody. We, we, we need everybody. the detective in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, and we we need, we need the, the, the the different agencies and the service providers. And if we all work together, we're going to get here. We may not agree on every little nuance or a little here and there, but I'm finding there's much more commonality around it if you can get past the PC stuff, to be real honest. That's sticking a lot of people up. And all I want to do is get people off the street forever. That's all I want to do. That's that's all we all want to do. And and if you're not doing that, you're contributing to their death. And how can you justify that? And and the the death rates we're seeing, a lot of cities, a lot of counties, having death rates you've never seen before. I understand. And that's the old, that's what, if that metrics doesn't get you, you know, it's time to wake up. These are fatal illnesses untreated, and we're allowing them to go unchecked. People are going to die, and they're dying by the thousands. We've got to do something. Thank you. Robert Appreciate Marvin, it. Is there a yes. website or anything Thank to refer people to anywhere? Do they can support or be a part of this or uh, look out for more? Yeah, look, <laughs> look out for more. Secretary Carson's our leader on this part. And, you know, so we're go to hhs.gov. So. Yes, put, that you can find information there, too. So, so. hhs.gov, and uh, it'll send you right on over there. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Do you want to take a little break, Caleb? I'll take a little break, and then we'll come back with your calls.